Hello and welcome to the second part of the live stream series Growing Together in Diversity, Hospital Partners and Dialogue, hosted by the Hospital Partnerships Funding Program. Our topic today, No Project Without a Good Team, Strengthening Patient-Oriented Neurosurgery in Malawi. The Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, to many of you better known as the GIZ, works for better health services all over the world. One of the German government's largest service providers in international cooperation is the GIZ Hospital Partnerships Program. It works on behalf of the Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development and is co-financed by the foundation Elsa Kröne Fresenius. I'm sorry, Elsa Kröne Fresenius. In 65 countries, medical and health professionals from German institutions form a hospital partnership with their colleagues from low and middle income countries in all medical fields. These nearly 400 project teams co-work on specialized medical training and further education so well-trained health staff can be formed, a great chance for global health. Today, we will get to know four members of such a team a little closer. Joining us virtually from Malawi are Dr. Patrick Kamalo, head of neurosurgery at Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital, Malawi, and his colleague, Dr. Sitembili Chimaliro, who will be the first female consultant in neurosurgery in Malawi from next year on. Both will tell us about their work in Malawi and about the teamwork with their German partners. Two of them are here in the studio with me. I welcome Professor Dr. Thomas Kapapa, Senior Consultant Neurosurgery at Ulm University Hospital, welcome, and his colleague Andreas Metz, Deputy Head Physiotherapy Surgery Unit, also from the Ulm Hospital. Welcome, and thank you for taking the time with us today. But before we start our conversation with the four guests, I would like to welcome all our viewers in the live stream. We are very happy that you are joining us today. You are welcome to join the conversation please use the YouTube chat function to do so. Enter your question or comment, and if you have a question for one of the four guests, please name them specifically so I can address them during our following conversation. Let's get started. Professor Kapapa, Thomas, and Mr. Metz, Andreas, thank you very much that you came to Bonn today for this live stream interview. In Malawi, there are currently 12 hospital partner projects and yours is one of them. You focus on the topic of patient-oriented neurosurgery and what teamwork can achieve in this. So first tell us, how do you two work together at the University Hospital in Oil? Thomas. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's a great honor for, for me and for us to be here today. Um, as you said, um, I'm a neurosurgeon working at the University Hospital and um, in this matter, I'm treating patients directly, but I'm convinced that um, my neurosurgical part is not the only part in treating patients. So I'm very happy that I'm accompanied by uh, Andreas, who is also treating the patient on his part. So I do the surgical and medical part, and he's doing the physiotherapy, and um, both together will lead in a very good outcome for the patient. So how long have you two been partners at the Ulm University Hospital? Andreas. I think, I think we work together since 15 years or more. So you know each other quite well yes. and you have a good base. Yeah. Um, Thomas, how did you find your way into neurosurgery? Well, that's a, a question I, uh, I often hear and I, I'm not sure to find the quite answer. Um, in my remembrance, it was like this that I heard from, uh, from a great surgeon when I studied in Hanover here in, in Germany, and I heard from a great neurosurgeon, I wanted to get deeper in, in this uh, topic. So I went there for a short time into his department. I was very, very impressed about how neurosurgical work can appear and what, what was the outcome in neuro, after neurosurgery. So there's, I think this was the main one when I was convinced to, be, to get a neurosurgeon. And you have worked in this profession for how long? Um, for my, now it's more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. Andreas, you also have your hands quite full at the hospital. What's your function? 
Uh, I'm physiotherapist uh, and function in all men, all uh, all parts of the the hospital. Uh, my main uh, yeah, my main uh, job is to mobilize uh, the patients and yeah, train them that they are able to move after a surgery. After surgery, mm -hmm, to this help is them all recover. all we do in in our part of the hospital is uh, surgery, and so all patients are. Post searches. Mm -hmm. So, how did you become aware of the GIZ Hospital Partnership Funding Program? Who became aware of it? You, Thomas? Yeah, a colleague of mine, who is actually now our project coordinator. Um, I got in contact with her, and she said, "Ah, oh, there's a funding source. Maybe you can use it for our small project." Uh, and she brought me there. She gave me that idea. Mm -hmm. So, when was that? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was 2016, 2017, and actually we wrote then the, uh, the application into 18. Mm -hmm. And how did you find your partner in Malawi? By incident. <laughs> <laughs> By incident, no. Um, uh, I, my family is living in Malawi, so this is why I uh, visit my family most of the time once a year. So, and I um, got to know t how the situation for neurosurgery is. And uh, an old colleague who was the head of surgery at that time, I got in contact with him. He said, um, we have a, a young and very good doctor here in Malawi who was sent out to uh, be trained as a neurosurgeon. And um, the head of the surgery at that time uh, brought us together. Uh, it was, I think it was 216 or 217. And um, we met in a an, in an small office, and it was like um, meeting my brother at the first moment. And uh, the, the, the contact is, is still like that. Mm -hmm. So you were of the same mind and had the same yes. ideas, and that's when you decided to become hospital yeah. partners. Yeah. Um, Andreas, what does patient-oriented neurosurgery mean? Because that's one of the main areas that the project focuses on. Can you explain this a little, maybe for non-neurosurgical experts? Yeah, that means that um, after the, the surgery, it's the, the patients should be, uh, should be able to do their, their own life. So, and this habit, uh, so, and this, uh, what we should do is to um, give them the encouragement that they are able to do their um, actively daily uh, life. So, and, we have to do uh, yeah, a goal, uh, what is able that the patient can, can do and should focus that we train him to do this. And one of the steps is the mobilizing by himself that he is able to walk and do little things, can do little things uh, from his daily life by himself. So. so they recover faster with this approach and they become mobile more quickly after the surgery? This goes. Uh, quickly uh, after surgery, a couple of days before this is, uh, we make a, a, oftentimes Thomas and I um, make a little uh, appointment uh, and he give me the, the start point, say, okay, this is able to do from my, my opinion, uh, they can start and if he give me this, this sign, we start days after surgery mm -hmm. as soon as possible. And this is also part of the project. Um, so let's look at the project uh, from both of your perspectives. What is special about this cooperation with your colleagues in Malawi at the hospital? Or what's the core of this project? What makes it tick and work? Um, I'm often asked um, why a neurosurgical project or a neurosurgery project should be done in, in a country like Malawi. Malawi has different other healthcare problems, so why especially neurosurgery? My answer is always the same. Because there are patients in need of neurosurgical healthcare. Um, so this is also th this patient-orientated um, approach. Um, if there's a patient who needs healthcare, so this healthcare part, should, or healthcare strength, should be strengthened in itself. So um, it's a very seldom that neurosurgery is done in, in sub-Saharan Africa as well, um, but it's it's useful and it's needful here in Malawi. So, um, 
The other fact is that uh, we think that neurosurgery can't be done on an island. As I am a surgeon alone, I cannot do the, the treatment on a patient. I need anesthetists, I need physiotherapists, I need special trained nurses. And uh, I think this is one aspect uh, um, in our project that uh, um, we now don't just aim for neurosurgery itself. We're aiming for the whole treatment process, which includes many other uh, professions. And I think um, we are very successful with it. And uh, it's new, but it's, um, it's for the patient. And uh, we are all working together as different professions in one process. Mm -hmm. So this was also a new approach for your partners in Malawi to include all these different medical professions that are necessary to mm -hmm. treat patients well. So Andreas, where does the physiotherapy approach that you have at the university clinic in Ulm come in at your partner's hospital? Um, I think the most, uh, you know, the biggest difference between Malawi and Germany is uh, the kind of work. So, and uh, the knowledge in Malawi, the physiotherapists from Malawi is, uh, is very high. This is a, a five-year study in, in Malawi. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, an, an hand-working job in Germany. So it's more science oriented in, in Malawi and it's more uh, hand-working oriented in Germany. And we bring these both uh, facts together. And my, uh, my thing is uh, that show the Malawian uh, that you should more do hand working. Mm. So they documentate a lot. This is, is a lot, a uh, lot of writing work, but it's not, uh, yeah, not, not hands on with the patient. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it. And I see you as a hands on with the patient person. Yeah, yes, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. So uh, nothing will change. If I just document it and nothing will change if I don't uh, get this problem on. Mm -hmm. so, and this is, I think, the main, uh, main goal uh, in the work between Germany and Malawi to bring these both sides together that is, uh, yeah, more work on the patients and not so much work document, uh, not so much documentation. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, um What's the status of neurosurgery in the German medical system before we look at the Malawi system? Um. Yeah, I think um, in neurosurgery in the German healthcare system is a seldom blossom. Well, with seldom blossom, I just mean um, as well compared to Malawi in Germany as well, neurosurgery. We are not as much neurosurgeon in Germany as internal medicine doctors or, or eye doctors, or for example, but we are necessary. As you see on emergency, uh, um, emergency medicine, we are doing uh, traumatic brain injuries and so on. And oncological, we are included in oncological therapies and, and stroke therapy. So we, are, we, have a, we have a certain, we have a certain place in healthcare surgery. So um, we are, um, complex, but we have special need. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned there's not so much neurosurgery in Malawi at this point. Yeah. Malawi uh, started with uh, Dr. Kamala. I think we, he will tell us um, there's um, one neurosurgeon only for 20 million Malawians, um, who, which is not a very good uh, matchup. So now there are five neurosurgeons and I think um, this is an improvement. It's a very good improvement, but um, I'm convinced it's not enough, but it's better now. Mm -hmm. And let's look quickly at how you manage a project that includes so many different professional groups and also two countries. Can you give us some glimpses into, you know, how do you keep this project going? What does it take from both partners? Hope, faith, and confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Hope, faith, and confidence. Um, no, it's uh, in fact it's 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 uh, it's networking and communication. I think it's networking communication. Uh, the pandemic uh, with uh, the restrictions of restriction of, of uh, traveling made us very hard, uh, hard conditions. But I think um, we kept uh, the communication up. So this is why we um, uh, could could. Um, could get in some more results. It's communication, it's networking, and um, it's the mindset. 
Mm -hmm. Well, let's just come to a recent visit of the Malawian group in Ulm. I think they just traveled home maybe last week or so. Yeah. So uh, there's a silver lining after two years of pandemic mm -hmm. on virtual communication. Um, physiotherapists, chief nurses, and a neurosurgeon um, stayed at your hospital um, for a three-week stay. Mm -hmm. Um, and you brought some pictures, didn't you? Yes, we did. Can we see the pictures from the recent visit from Malawi? So what do we see here? Yeah, um, this is uh, part of the first day. On the first day, we made a, a hospital tour to um, show them the environment, show them how we work. And uh, this is, um, I think this is part of the radiology um, department where we showed them our equipment and how we work together well, with the different stuff. Um, this is a picture from a workshop we did um, because I, uh, we all were convinced that uh, the different professional groups should ha have the common idea of what w we are doing. Physiotherapists are seldom in the theater in the operation room, so physiotherapists or and, and any other professional like nurses should know um, what is surgery, what is surgery and here we are training craniotomy and uh, there's uh, uh, Fraser, uh, one of the theatre OR nurses who is doing uh, work together with the train, uh, is trained by our nurses in the theatre. It's, uh, um, it's a very good picture I think because uh, here you can see that uh, the training is not only theoretical, theoretically it's, it's hands on, it's hands on. This is uh, a patient on the ICU. This is um, a colleague of mine in, in the back of the patient. And in the front, this is Alex. This is um, a physical therapist uh, from Malawi. And they start mobilizing the patient after surgery. Mm -hmm. So um, I gather, Andreas, that there are also visits to Malawi uh, on the physiotherapeutical side. And I think you've been there? Yeah, been yes. there twice. Uh, so what was your experience? What's the aim of these visits when you go to Malawi? Yeah, I hope they uh, take some ideas from Germany back to Malawi, what means uh, to lit little short communication uh, that they saw in, in Germany. Um, Thomas and me, we got no special uh, appointments or special times on a day to speak together. We speak together if we see him um, as he go to visit the patients. So this is a, a shortcut talking and I hope this shortcut talking goes to Malawi also. Mm -hmm. So for the two of you and some of your colleagues in Owen, what is the added value of the visits to Malawi? What do you bring back? For me and um I have, a, I have a, there's a, there's a certain certain evidence and certain story. We had a we had a nurse um, who was not very confident and was not very comfortable in working in the setup in Germany. She said that um, the environment um, is not very good in Germany. So she went with us to Malawi, and after she came back, she had a different view. On, on what the circumstances in Germany is because the, she saw a different way to work in a healthcare system. And this is, I think, one of the major impacts in this, in, this, uh, in this project to open the view, to open the mind for other circumstances, to create, to, to create new ideas, to, to uh, feel their own creativity. You know? um, I think if you get out of your comfort zone, um, you can see a lot of more things which can be done by your new ideas. Mm -hmm. So how many visits back and forth have taken place since you started the project? Um, we went to Malawi three times, only three times. The pandemic. The pandemic, yes. And um, we are very glad that uh, the Malawians had the opportunity to come, as you said, for four weeks now, four weeks ago, and stayed there for, for three weeks. But uh, we're planning the next visit from Malawi in July. Mm -hmm. So now you're speeding up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Before we welcome our guests from Malawi, um, a reminder for our viewers, you are uh, welcome to write your comments and questions in the YouTube chat, and then I will include them in our conversation later. So, um, we have uh, 
Dr. Kamalo and Dr. Chimaliro from Malawi with us now. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Hi, it's nice to see you and to talk with you despite the distance. The virtual world makes it possible. Um, yes. You just returned from a visit and I have a question. How, if you had to describe the work you do with your German partners in one word, which word would you choose for the kind of cooperation you have with these two and some of their colleagues? Um, I think it's, it's very inspirational, I would say, in one way. <laughs> very special. All right, we'll get to how special. Inspi inspir inspirational. Inspirational. Inspiring. Oh, inspiring. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. inspiring. I'll remember that. Yeah. And uh, Sitam, what would you describe it as? What would you pick as a word? I would say it's um, something that brings hope. Mm hmm Yes, to me and to my team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something that gives us hope. Well, then let's hear your side of the story and this partnership. How did you and Thomas Kapapa become partners? Thomas already told us about his version of the story. So, Patrick, what's your version? <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Uh, once again, <clears throat> thank you for giving us an opportunity to share our story. So the way I, I met Thomas, I think in, in one of his visits uh, to Malawi, which he has uh, talked about, um, he has had some interest for some time to help uh, the, the neurosurgical the service in Malawi. So eventually um, he hunted for me, I would say. He had been to Malawi several times, but uh, we didn't really manage to meet. Uh, but at, at last, um, he, he never gave up. Eventually, we managed to meet. And as this is, I think we clicked uh, at the same uh, at the same time. Uh, we, we identified the needs that we have, and the, knowing that together, if, if we collaborate, then uh, we can offer a much better service to the people of Malawi. So it sounds but like a combination of persistence was, uh, and mindset. Ah, I still hear you, Patrick. I'm sorry, the, the connection was a little bad. So please finish your last sentence. Yeah, so, so, so I, I, I was saying um, after his persistence, uh, I think lo lo looking for me, eventually we met. And uh, once we met, uh, we, we discussed and looking at the work that was before us uh, and his willingness to help our, our, our situation, uh, we felt very encouraged and uh, yeah, that we, together we could offer a better service to the people that we serve in Malawi. Mm -hmm. I asked um, Thomas how he decided to become a neurosurgeon. What brought you into neurosurgery, Patrick? What was your motivation? <sighs> Yeah, it's a <laughs> long story. I think having worked in, I mean, ha having like trained in Malawi, never really had, uh, didn't know a neurosurgeon. There hasn't been a practicing neurosurgeon in Malawi for some time. But then when I was in college, uh, our first cell of department of surgery was a neurosurgeon. So that's like the first uh, neurosurgeon I knew as an eminent neurosurgeon from uh, Nigeria. So probably must have impressed me in some way, because I said it was the first new surgeon that I knew. And then um, eventually um, with my family, I think my son uh, was born with a neurosurgical problem. Uh, then I traveled to Uganda to look for help, which was not available in Malawi. And then uh, after that, uh, when I came back, uh, I realized that uh, what was happening there, it looked doable. So I was inspired to leave whatever I was doing and then uh, join the surgical department uh, and eventually went for training. So I think the main mot motivation that time was, uh, I think it was the yes, my son who pushed me, but um, I felt like what I went to Uganda to look for the help that I got there, there are a lot of people in Malawi who cannot uh, manage uh, to do that. So I, I felt maybe if I train your surgery, then I could bring services uh, closer home, which mm. is uh, probably what we are doing now. So how long have you worked as a neurosurgeon? 
Yeah, so from the time I graduated, so this should be like my 11th year in practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So also very experienced by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thomas, yes. Thomas has already mentioned some of the differences between neurosurgery in Germany and Malawi, but what kind of diseases or diagnosis in neurosurgery um, exist in Malawi? What are your main fields of work? Yeah, so I'll say most of the uh, conditions we deal with is children with um, hydrocephalus, which is uh, a lot of water in the brain, which can cause brain damage. And then we also have... Uh, some some brain tumors that we are managing and uh road traffic accidents so uh, causing uh traumatic brain injury and uh some spinal injuries and then degenerative spine as well mm -hmm. and uh, some fair amount of uh, infections uh, in in the brain so brain abscesses and um uh, subdural pimas uh, since infections are quite common in our setting yes you brought some pictures from your work Thomas, who can explain to us what we are seeing. These are pictures from the La Malawi yeah. hospital. These are pictures who are really not common for us neurosurgeons in Germany, but who are, that are very common in Malawi. The, you know, here you can see uh, a child with a hydrocephalus, which is uh, the, uh, the typical kind of uh, disease uh, Patrick and his team is treating. And um, we, we find them in a very late stage of uh, their illnesses. Here you can see um, the surgical setup in the, the theater and the operation room. Um, and, uh, this, <laughs> this is a, a nice picture where, where uh, Patrick and I uh, are doing concept work on the, in the project. We are, this is a picture where we introduced a new training module. This is virtual or augmented reality. Because it's very difficult to train neurosurgeons there only on patients, we try to uh, give a new concept on this is what, how, how we sit to usually sit together when we met in Malawi and uh, this is our intensive care nurse uh, uh, Stephanie Greve from uh, from our intensive care who's training uh, staff from intensive care in Malawi we were last uh, in February we made a workshop a great workshop there and um, it's it's always it's always fun and hard work well thank you um, and thank you for sharing the pictures Patrick um, can you give us some um, best practices or some achievements of the project since it started? Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> so far we, we have uh, managed, managed to incorporate uh, the physiotherapists in the work that we do. So that, that has been quite a major achievement. We did have some physiotherapists uh, in our hospital, but uh, they were not that much involved in the work uh, that we are doing. But uh, with uh, support from Andreas and uh, his team, uh, we have managed to incorporate uh, uh, physiotherapy and rehabilitation in the work that we are doing. Uh, we have also been getting some uh, support uh, from Thomas. Uh, you know, in our setting, well, we, we have problems with uh, equipment. Uh, sometimes consumables are, are not available. And uh, Thomas has been instrumental in trying to get us uh, some equipment uh, which we can use in the operations that we are conducting. Um, and also for the training, uh, because we have a training program where we are training uh, neurosurgeons, uh, including Stembe, who is here with us. Um, so Thomas and his team, I think they have, they have been contributing, uh, uh, teaching uh, the trainees, uh, as I said, uh, trying to give them some skills of using like a virtual reality for some cases which they need to know as neurosurgeons in training, but cases which are not available in Malawi. So there's quite a wide spectrum of work that we are doing together. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Um, another focus of the hospital partnership funding program is the training and further education of professionals. And Sitam, um, Dr. Chimaliro, you will be the first woman in Malawi who is a trained neurosurgeon next year. We already mentioned that. But much more recently, you were in Ulm for a three-week uh, stay and have just returned, I think, last week. Um, how was your re-entry process at your Malawian workplace? Was there anything you noticed or looked upon with a new set of eyes after staying in Ulm and working with Thomas and Andreas and his crew? 
Um, thank you. Um, yes, whilst working in OM, um, it, it was a very good experience. I worked with very uh, an amazing team and very experienced people. What I brought back um, was the work ethic. I uh, the work ethic was really amazing there. Um, from the time work is starting throughout the whole day, throughout the closing time, I think that was something that I could easily adapt to my setting. Um, everything else was a bit different. I mean, it's a very different setting from my own. Um, I could not easily just copy and paste what we did there. Um, but the things that I could take um, um, from the work ethic, um, from how we relate to the different teams. So as the neurosurgeons working hand in hand with nurses, working mm -hmm. hand in hand with physiotherapies, um, just that interaction so that we can give the patient the best um, specialized care that we can. Um, I think that was one of the most important things that um, I, I brought back um, this time around. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, this is also part of the, the training and education part of the project, what do you benefit or how do you benefit professionally from the whole project? Um, so like with this visit, um, I was able to gain some new skills. Um, I was able to work hand in hand with Professor Kababa in theatre, um, learned some new techniques that are minimal invasive, which are very good for patient outcomes. And this is something that I can, that as a trainee, I'm supposed to um, learn these things. And this is something that will um, benefit my patients. And it's something that we can easily adapt to our setting. Um, with the help of more equipment, as of now, we're not capable to do that. So um, gaining the new skills, um, gaining new knowledge as well um, with interaction with him. He, we, they are recently involved with our um, teaching us. We have weekly classes um, as part of our training. So they're also involved in part of that recently. So we are getting more knowledge. We are gaining new skills. Um, which will eventually allow me to be a better doctor and provide better care for my patients. Mm -hmm. And in preparation, there were some conversations with you and you always talk when you um, refer to teamwork, you talk about communication, how valuable and how important this is. What do you see as challenges maybe in the communication in this project, the distance or maybe the different backgrounds or, um, what have you learned also, you know, from these challenges that might might exist? Um, yes, there is challenges um, with, I think with the proximity is a challenge um, because we, we can't really, the surgery is more hands-on. Um, you cannot really learn it in theory, it is more hands-on. So we don't have a lot of hands-on challenges, um, hands-on interactions to get to learn um, different types of skills. But um, we do have virtual um, ways to to tackle that. So virtually we can learn, we can, we, we are being able, we are being taught virtually. Um, we are having, um, we can communicate through emails. Um, I like this, this, with this project, um, Professor Kawaba is very open. So there is an open communication. We can air out our ideas. Um, he can help us in areas where we think we need the most help. So um, I definitely think communication is good um, within the setup that we have. I have a question for all four of you. Um, because I think it might interest some of our viewers. There are some hospital partners amongst the viewers. Are there any lessons learned experiences from this hospital partnership that you would like to share um, and maybe give some recommendations? Thomas, I see you nod, so please, what would you like to share with those that might be interested in learning from this partnership? Yeah, my lesson I, I learned and I'm still learning because it's a long learning process is that um, if I have an idea in my mind, doesn't mean that I'm always able to transfer this idea out of my head into different other heads. I think this is, um, this is something I, I still have to learn. And uh, as Sita said, communication is a solution. One have to communicate, communicate and communicate. And 
even if the idea should be the best idea um, for the solution, you have to transfer the idea. And uh, don't be shy to, to find new, new ways for this transfer. Um, I think you should be able to communicate the idea and the goal of this idea. And you should start your process of uh, your project um, with always transmitting the idea as you do the project. Don't f uh, you, do, you don't have to get to the, um, to the point where you said, I set the, the idea or the, the concept once, so all, all of the project members know the idea. For me, I'm sure um, that I always have to remind myself and remind any other from, to the idea and um, to the goal. Patrick, on your side, is there some experience, some lesson learned that others who listen in on us might benefit from if they're working in a partnership? Yeah, um, I think firstly, probably what I've learned from Thomas, he'll be excited to hear this, I'm sure, is um, trying to start small. Um, usually, I think our prob problems are huge, and um, you may be tempted to try to solve everything at the same time. Uh, but that doesn't really work. I mean, that, that's what I've uh, learned from Thomas. I'm, I'm actually at a certain meeting, and uh, we are trying to set goals, and uh, everyone keeps thinking big. Most of the times, we are setting ourselves for failures. So I think it's good to break down the problem that you have into small of sections and then you do one part at a time and uh, then uh, you can assess your uh, progress uh, much easier and move towards the goal uh, other than doing uh, everything at the same time. I think that has been quite an important uh, learning point and I am <laughs> practicing it and even uh, preaching it. Mm -hmm. um, the the other thing <clears throat> has been like maybe our, our cultural uh, differences. Um, like the, the culture of doing things and thinking, uh, I think from Malawi is different uh, from uh, the culture in German and thinking. And uh, at times, I think yeah, we, we need to sit down and, I mean, as Thomas says, that uh, we, we need to understand each other and then understand uh, the, the context uh, from which uh, your partners are. Uh, are talking from I think that that um, helps avoid uh, a lot of conflict and, and then you can work together uh, and achieve progress. Yeah. Thank you, Sita. Anything um, from your experience that might be helpful to some of our viewers? Oh, the only thing I can add is that partnerships are good um, to help. Um, Ultimately, they, they are good to help, um, um, what's the word, to help solve the problems that we have. Um, just to add on from what they're saying, um, we do have a lot of problems. Um, the number of problems that we have that cannot be achieved with one person. Um, but at least um, we have people that are able to help us um, in the area that they can. Um, so in our setting, it's not possible to be able to, to give the best care to everyone and your surgery is not prioritized um, in, in the number of problems that we face as a country. Um, but to have someone to take the time to at least pick out one part um, that they want to help, um, it, it makes a huge difference overall to us and, um, um, and the patients that we face. So I think that's it's very important. Thank you. And Andreas? I think you should be uh, should be careful that the project is in a, like Patrick said in a um, in a little little circle. The the difficult thing is you you see this and say yeah we should make this also and then we should make another step to this. Uh, we start in the hospital to the uh, neurosurgery physiotherapist. Then, for example, we have to go to school. They have to go. Uh, to train the skills in school. If you train in school and you do put a uh, patients um, in a rehabilitation center, then you have to go to do what is after the rehabilitation center. And who will this do? And so this, you should focus you uh, on a little part. Uh, will, will you uh, make it a little bit better? So, but you have to be careful that it is in a. Uh, I don't know how I would say in German in a überschaubaren Raum. Manageable. Yeah. 
manageable manageable and stay yeah. realistic within your resources so, and your limits yeah all right yeah. i hope some of you could draw something um i'm drawing from your questions now thank you for providing uh, them to us and one question is to you andreas um what are your learnings as a German physiotherapist from the Malawian colleagues? What is something that you took away and maybe are actually implementing in your work now? Uh, yeah, I told them uh, before that uh, the, the knowledge is, is real high and the documentation is, is really good in, in Malawi about the uh, situation of the patient. So, um, and I learned uh, that we should documentate maybe a little bit more detail in, in our case. Yeah. And what is, is totally impressive is uh, that the creative work in Malawi with the devices, this is uh, limited, but they are uh, really creative to manage this problem. Mm -hmm. Sita, there's a question for you since you stayed in Ulm. Are you going back sometime soon? <clears throat> um, hopefully I can go back um, because learning is um, a continuous process um, and I would still like to be, because there are certain um, surgeries, um, skills that I do not have privilege um, I have privilege to do here because of the limitations that we have. So I would definitely like to go back to just have um, better exposure um, when it comes to certain things that I, I cannot do here. Um, that way I can improve the skills that I have um, as a surgeon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thomas, you mentioned there's another visit um, coming up soon in July. Um, and when are Germans going to Malawi? Is there something in the schedule already? Yes, it is. And what are the goals for that visit? Yeah, um, we are visiting Malawi in a couple of days, 13 May. We start off for a one week stay. And the first goal <coughs> is to keep, keep connection. First goal is to keep connection. Um, but um, we have a next visit in September and in November in Malawi. So this visit um, is mostly to prepare the larger visit. It's a small team in May now. Um, we're preparing together with our colleagues in, in Malawi the two larger visits in September and November because we're planning workshops, we're planning uh, seminars and lectures and um, uh, we need a well-prepared session uh, or set up then. So this is why we are, we are moving there. And uh, of course we have a small teaching, teaching period then in May as well. Mm -hmm. There's a comment that I want to share. Someone says it's a very amazing project as you're following a patient-oriented and multidisciplinary approach. But the person is wondering what are the primary obstacles when you from Ulm are carrying out your activities in Malawi? Mm. Anything you can share with us? And how did you overcome them? Yeah. Um, main obstacle, as I said before, was the pandemic time. It was the pandemic time. We, we had a different time course planned and we have to adapt it. But now um, we are trying to, to, get, to get to our goals now. And I uh, think it's neurosurgery, for this neurosurgical pro neurosurgery project, neurosurgery is a high-tech uh, high discipline in, in medicine. And uh, as Sita already said, we are not able to bring all the high-tech, which is useful for patient security and uh, better outcomes, into Malawi. So um, and I'm just repeating what already said in, in, in this uh, meeting. But, um, we have to be creative to get better solutions, other solutions, according to the setup in Malawi, to get the same outcomes, <coughs> patient-orientated outcome um, in Malawi. So we are, we are not able to transfer all technology. We have to create new technology, new processes. And this, um, I think this is, this is one of, of the obstacles. Mm -hmm. and, and if I may ad admit, this is once again why communication is very, very, very helpful. Patrick, um, was there anything within the project that you s surprised you, that you didn't expect? <clears throat> yeah, um, I think obviously the pandemic was uh, something that uh, surprised us a lot because uh, our project was based on uh, travel, on, on, on this interaction that people can uh, move across uh, and share skills. 
so this was quite a shock and it, it took us i think a bit of time to look at alternative ways um, again the pandemic uh, prolonged so that, that was a uh, quite a big challenge um i think the interest that we have had from i think our colleagues from germany I think has also been uh, uh, quite good and uh, surprising um he, the, the, I, I talked about the cultural issues. There is a communication barrier, uh, but uh, people are still interested to come across and uh, interact and, 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 and share information. So I think at time that uh, takes a bit of courage for <clears throat> people to move out of their comfort zone and uh, expose uh, themselves in a situation where <laughs> they may not be that confident because of communication and, and other issues. And uh, that has been a very encouraging that is it's showing that I think, uh, uh, I think from both sides, uh, people are willing to learn and uh, give uh, their best uh, despite uh, the limitations in communication. And what was the most memorable experience so far? For me, I think it's, um, I think the support uh, that we have got from uh, Thomas, especially in, 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 in terms of uh, equipment. Um, we, 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 we have got like some drills that we use, as, as Thomas said, I mean, in your surgery is quite uh, high tech. So there are some drills that we use and things like that. And um, we had problems that our, our drills kept, break, kept breaking and uh, uh, Thomas pro pro provided, I think, um, better solutions, I think a, a more robust drill that uh, we have been using and uh, has been functioning and, and, and more drills. I think that has been um, uh, quite uh, phenomenal on my side. I think as a, as a neurosurgeon, I spend most time in theatre and, and, and need, need to operate and uh, uh, being able uh, to do that, uh, that has been good. We've also had uh, some supply of shunts, uh, some high-tech shunts, uh, programmable shunts, which are good for some of the patients whom we have had, which we never had access to. And uh, it was quite difficult to manage our patients like those. And um, with the provision of this program, chance we have uh, made a, a big difference in a, a number of patients who are, who are living more quality life now. So uh, <clears throat> I think from that, uh, it, it, it's something that uh, has been worth um, an exercise worthwhile. Well, Patrick and Sita, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your experience and your side of the project and lessons learned on your part. Please stay with us until we finish. And our viewers, you can still ask questions in the chat. We will forward them to our participants and get the answers to you if you're still interested in some of the details because we don't have much time left. So let me wrap up with Andreas and Thomas here in the studio. Um, let me look like two to five years ahead. Where do you think the project is going to be? What's your vision? What's your hope? My vision and my hope is that the project is still containable, <laughs> still manageable, <laughs> because um, it's growing so fast. It's very, very really growing so fast. We are um, both sides, the Malawian side and the German side, um, we are learning from each other and we are progressing. And this is good. But with progress, um, as I said before, the, the project grows and grows and grows. And I, I'm a little bit afraid and um, that it's growing too fast because, as uh, uh, Patrick already said, I'm, I'm convinced from this concept of keeping things manageable. And um, however, we, um, for me, the goal and together with Patrick, we want to, to let the project grow, to, to let more patients uh, gain access to neurosurgery and to expand it more to Malawi, not only in the south where we are working, but also to the whole Malawi to, to, to improve the access of neurosurgical healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, Andreas, what is your vision or where do you hope the project goes? Or maybe following up on Thomas, what are you afraid of? Uh, this is uh, all what Thomas said is right. Yeah, I must be careful, I told him uh, before. But for me, I hope that uh, the skills we, we show the therapists to um, make the handwork on the patient uh, and Alex and Talumpa will uh, give them to their students and hope in, in five years the next generation of therapists is, is on the way. Uh, 
it's got a different quality, a different kind of work. This mm -hmm. is what I hope. So what does it need to contain and keep it manageable and still like successful achieving its goals? Any ideas, Thomas? Yes, of course. Um, as I said before, we're training with stuff from different um, from, from different professionals. And uh, together with theoretical and, and, and practical training, uh, Patrick and I think that um, the real mindset, the, the mindset of the project should also be transferred. So um, it's not only to, to um, conduct trainings in Malawi, you also have to transport the idea of the, of, the, of, the, of the project, the mindset of the project. And I think it's okay and it's, it's, um, uh, we want that the project should grow, but the mindset of the people should also grow in the same speed as the project grows. And um, yeah, we're trying to do our best with it. Mm -hmm. So in order to move forward and to achieve some of these goals, are there some contacts or people you need, because maybe they might be out there in the live stream, so this is your time to address it. You know, do you need any specific professionalism, knowledge base, contacts for the project? Take your chances. I don't know if the person is out there, but maybe someone will respond after this. Would you like to start? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, as before, uh, we, I think we are uh, international concept in Malawi. We need an international concept. We are not able to, to support um, this department on our own. And I'm very happy that, for example, the uh, colleagues from, from Oslo, knowing, made a very good ground on which we uh, put up our project. So They're also partners they are with also the Malawi partners, Hospital. So, so we are working very good with them together. But um, as it is an interdisciplinary uh, approach, we also need help from, for example, a neuropathologist, yeah, for example, which this discipline doesn't exist in Malawi. So we also need this 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 approach. Um, Neuroanesthesiology is also a part which is, must be involved. As I said before, neurosurgery can't be done on an island. So if the project grows, we need more disciplines with the right and same mindset who can bring up the idea. So thank you very much. Anything to add, Andreas? No. No. Well, in that case, um, time runs quickly when you're having fun and or a very interesting and inspiring conversation. Thank you for me. I have really enjoyed it very much. Also, thank you to Patrick and Sita in Malawi. Thank you for joining us today and making this possible. Thank you, Thomas and Andreas, for traveling to Bonn, sharing this beautiful studio with me and our audience. And thank you, your, our viewers and the live stream, for taking the time. Um, we hope that you enjoyed it, that you had takeaways, some inspirations as well. We will have a third part of the live stream series. We will announce the date and the topic on all channels of the Hospital Partnerships Funding Program. And of course, you can also watch the recording um, of the live stream on YouTube or recommend it to others who might be interested in the topic. So thank you very much and I wish everyone a nice day. Goodbye from Bonn.